Mortal Online 2 is a hardcore sandbox full loop PvP MMO. And given there's no classes, you just make a character and take whatever skills you want. I wanted to share the best builds in the game or the top five builds that will take you really far and will give you the, the best chance in this really competitive game. Obviously, you can play this game however you want, be whoever you want to be, do whatever you want to do. And there's no one telling you to play a certain class, not even me. But making the wrong decision or not planning ahead in the character creator can really make the game harder for you. So hopefully this gives you a really good start. Hopefully this helps in some way. So let's get straight into it. If you're looking to make a foot fighter, there's two builds that are insanely strong right now and you'll see all over the game. One of them is the Ogmir, uh, Ogmir tank, Ogmir mounted archer tank foot fighter. This character kind of does it all. It has the most strengths possible on a foot fighter with 123 strength. It also has 130, over 130 constitution, which means you can deal a ton of damage, wield the best bows in the game, and have insane constitution over 200 health. The playstyle of an Ogmir footy is either take a tower shield, you can wear the best armor and a tower shield at the same time, you can have tower shield and a one-handed axe and hammer, and be a frontline fighter, but you can take a two-handed axe, two-handed hammer, like a big maul, and just be a berserker. You can take a ton of damage, deal a ton of damage, and if people run, you pull out the best bow in the game and shoot them down. Your one weakness here is your speed. Your speed sucks. I won't, I won't, you know, sugarcoat it. You can't chase people and you can't really get away. If you get into a fight, you've got to barrel down, hold the shield and be ready to go. I would say this build is much better in team fights as a, as a frontline fighter with a healer behind you. And it suffers a little bit more solo due to its speed, but it's still one of the best melee fighters and mounted archers in the game. So to make this character, you want to make the Ogmir a Blaine race. You want to make him pretty sure. I know I said you want to be a little bit high for melee damage, but the beauty of this character is he's so small. So even on a horse, this is a hard target to hit. I would go for around 164 height, maybe 166, but you can make him taller if you want more damage. You want to go stout weight for the best balance and 31 years old is generally a good age to go for on a melee character. They have some amazing clades. You can spend pretty much all 20 clade points and be getting stronger every time. Stone skin gives you uh, resistance to damage. Then you've got damage resistance from piercing and slashing, just a passive. You've got a health regain buff, a reduced damage buff. They get two clades at the bottom, uh, armor bearer and the one next to it. They give you 3k extra armor weight each. This means you can literally wear the, the best gear in the game without ever being over encumbered. Plus being an Ogmir, you're, you're so small. Like I said, that if you were playing, say, a human or a Thursa, you're a lot easier to hit with arrows than a little Ogmir standing behind a giant shield. For the action skills, you want to take all the basic fighter action skills, blocking, aggressive stance, defensive stance, armor training, heavy armor training, all this stuff, sprinting, axes or hammers, up to you, anatomy to heal with bandages. It's it's very standard fighter, all the fighter things. Um, you can drop things like endurance on this character. Some people play with a little bit. I personally don't. And you'll even have enough for controlled riding and mounted archery, meaning that you're extremely powerful on foot and extremely powerful on horseback. It's a great all round build. And that's why it's, you know, the first one I'm going to talk about. Next up, we'll do the other foot fighter. Another fantastic foot fighter is in the complete opposite direction. And this is the Dex feel Vila footy. This is the exact opposite of the Orgmir. You have much less strength, so can't use the best bows. You can't use like the crazy armor, but you can deal great damage with your short bow and are nimble. Speed is so important in this game. And I'll talk about it in a couple of builds. You can choose what fight you want to start and when those fights end. You have over 120 dexterity, so you can run from pretty much every other character in the game except other Velas. It doesn't just mean running away, but you can you can start a fight, get low, run out, bandage, run back in, and they can't do much. You can chase enemies for miles. You can hunt down enemy mages in a fight. The playstyle of a Dex 40 is just all speed. You run in, deal damage, get back, get back in. If someone's low, you're the one who runs down and finishes them off. You see a mage, you charge at it. At it it's the same in a group fight. You can dive into the back line, get a mage and get out. It's a very fast and fun class. It lacks some of the damage of like an Orgmir or a Thursa, but it's very, very fast and fun. And if you're time you with your parries well, you'll probably deal a ton of damage as well because your attacks are harder to see because you're so fast. So for the Alvarin, we go 31 again. It's very good for fighters. We get a Clade, which reduces the negative effects of aging too, which is huge. Height, we'd go max generally as this gives extra melee damage. And then for weight, it's your call. I personally go fit so that you can get your dexterity over 120. And, you know, the higher your dexterity, the better. If your dexterity is lower than someone else, you can't outrun them. So keeping it as high as possible means you can outrun the vast majority of people in the game. I'll be honest, as a melee, the clades for Alvarin are pretty bad. It's all just speed. Like human thursas and Orgmirs have great buffs and clades for melee fighting. But everything on Alvarin is speed. So take every speed buff and dex increase and speed increase you can find. And this way you'll be faster than everything except for other Velas. And, you know, Shiva and any Alvarin. You can also take two archer's arm clades, which lets you hold better bows, uh, which you'll need for your really low strength. 
Action skills, super simple. As I said again, all the action skills above, all the fighter skills, except maybe take swords instead of uh, instead of mauls and hammers. If you do want to choose a different weapon, go for it. There's nothing stopping you using spears, daggers, whatever the hell you want. But yeah, it's generally another fighter build with some mounted archery thrown in as well. You can go harder on mounted archery and or harder on the melee side if you want, but there's enough stats to get a bit of everything in here. The Dex Mage. The, the Dex Mage Necromancer, we'll call it. Moving out of the fighters, this... This is an expensive build and it's hard to play. This is not a beginner build. I This was from my first build, uh, no regrets, but it's it's not an easy first build. If you can play this, you'll be insane. If you can't, you'll be the weakest guy there. This Dex Mage build uses normal ecumenal magic and then necromancy to summon walkers, raise the undead. It's a very expensive build to finish. Getting all the spells is expensive. So it's kind of hard for a new player who doesn't even know where to go for the spells. But if you're willing to you know, put the work in, grind the money, learn how to play it. This build is crazy. Once you get, once you build this out, you'll be riding on a risen pet with over five walkers at your side, and it just feels amazing. You don't have the same magic damage as, say, a full pure fat mage, and you won't be anywhere near as strong as a footy in melee, but you can go in and out of combat. You can throw pets, walkers. You can cast in, in awesome necromancy spells. You can even throw in a bit of elementalism if you want to throw fireballs. It's a really, really fun adaptive playstyle. So this is another Alvarin, but instead of Vila, we go for the Shiva race, as they're more adept at magic. Again, I'd go 31 for the same reasons as before, and minimum height because we don't care about damage bonus. But wait, this is harder. The skinny you go, the faster you are, and the more intelligence you have. Therefore, if you want, if you were, if you're in the game and you go skeletal in the end, you would have over 120 decks, uh, 120 uh, intelligence, I think, and 130 deck, over 130 decks. But you'd have no carry weight and no health, so it's a huge risk. A lot of people play this lean. But I, I personally would start lean, which kind of gives you a very good balance. And if you're feeling confident, lower the weight a little bit. You can lower the weights in game just by eating or not eating. For the clades, you've got the same issue as the dex footy. It's, it's all speed. So take them all. There's two really good ones that you can grab here though. Thaumaturge means you have a 50% chance of not using any regents when casting a spell, which is huge for necromancy because you save on expensive, hard to get regents and spirit boxes. For the action skills, this is different. You want all the mage ones. Mental training, mental offense, vitality. You want to take Ecumental normally to 62 for the heals for T-Lash, which is the main damaging ability of the school. Um, there's a shield in there. Necromancy and Ritualism, I'd go all the way. You want to grab a dagger. You want to grab blocking skills, maybe defensive stance. As daggers scale well with decks, you can parry with it and do huge damage at melee range, getting weak spots and stuff. This is a build that is just brutal at all areas. You're in the back, maybe you're throwing fireballs. You're in the middle, maybe you're throwing walkers on people and casting really cool magic. You're at the front, you're parrying and stabbing with daggers and you're very fast and hard to see. It's a crazy build and it's hard to play, but it's really fun. After all this, you do have a few points left over. You can either go into Mounted Majory for damage on horseback or Elementalism to throw fireballs, whatever you fancy. I think this build works best on the ground, so I normally throw in a little bit of Elementalism, maybe take it to 65 so you get fireball, but yeah, Dex Mage, incredibly fun. Next up, a really different class, the Fat Human Mage Tamer. This is this is a strange one. So in Dex Mage, we take a hit on magic for speed, but in this one, we push the slider all the way, maximize damage with all the negative effects that come with it. The playstyle of this is mounted magery with pets. You sit on a big horse, you're like 200 kg, you're just fat, max 200% weight, you're fat, casting powerful magic while you're directing your pets, your wolves, your terror birds to fight at melee combat. While you're doing that, you're casting the best spells in the game from the back of your horse. Your intelligence is so high that you can fully heal yourself and your pet in combat, and you absolutely wreck people with both spells and magic. There's a lot of uh, a lot of work on this one. You've got to go out, tame pets, level pets, and the build's kind of bad without leveled pets, a strong horse, an armored horse, and as soon as you're off your horse, you're pretty weak. But when you're on that horse, a big level 125 armored horse with a dire wolf at your two dire wolves at your side. You are so strong. You can just burn through plate armor with your magic. You can you can take on a lot of people solo. You can solo trolls on this class with a turtle. This class is is very, very strong when it's set up right. So to make it, you want to go human, half Sidoian. Some people go, I go full Tindremic, but some people go half Sidoian, half Sudoken for um, extra attribute points. And then for age, you want to go 62. You want to be old, old for the most intelligence. You'd be slow, you'll be weak, but you have the most intelligence in, that you can get. Um, uh, the most intelligence possible. Height, I normally go super small. You don't need melee damage and you get extra attribute points for going small. And the clades, the clades are just fantastic on humans. There's cleric in here that lets you wear 4kg of extra armor before you get penalty to mana regen. 
And there's loads of other things that give you points back. There's free action points in riding for your all your riding skills. There's 20 free ecumenical spell points. There's 50 free action points just flat. There's there's a, a thing in here, a uh, tactician, that reduces damage you deal to allies. So if you accidentally clip an ally or you throw out an AOE and it hits your ally, you don't do as much damage. The, the humans, human mage is so strong right now. And you, you literally are just built for pure magic. I love this build, huge fan of it. Action skills, it's the same as before with the magic. You want mental training, mental offense, vitalism, all that stuff. You don't worry about blocking, don't worry about weapons, none of that. You want to take all of the pet stuff. So you want creature control and advanced creature control, which lets you hold more pets. You want herding, which reduces the debuff from having multiple pets out at once. You want taming. You want beast mastery, which gives your pets a flat 25% increase to the damage and lets you use skills on them like, like little Pokemon. And then you want to take controlled riding and... Mounted Majory. So Mounted Majory reduces the negative effects of casting on a horse. So I think it's like 50% weaker on a horse, but if you have Mounted Majory, you do the same amount of healing and damage on the horse as if you're on the ground. So these are essential for a, a Mounted Fat Mage Tamer. Yeah. There's it. And then once you've got all that, it's your choice if you want to go more into magic or more into pets. You can take things like Animal Care that lets them level faster, or you can dip into spiritism for a big spiritism laser it's kind of your choice but you need lots of taming stuff lots of magic stuff for the base and then you have about 100 points to choose what you want to do last up the hybrid the human hybrid that does both magic and melee i i've not been a fan of this one for a while but you've seen more and more of them and they're they're doing good they're doing good humans are incredible for hybrid classes because their clades give a good split of magic buffs and melee buffs you also get to wear armor without losing mana regen because of the, the cleric uh, talent that we talked about earlier, which is, fits a hybrid perfectly. You can take this build two ways. You can either be a paladin, where you put up a magic shield, you throw a couple of damaging spells, and then you pull your sword, run out, damage, and then heal. Or you can do what people are calling the Dark Knight or the Death Knight build, where you take necromancy and you run in, you blast a bit of necromancy magic, and then you pull out your sword. You've got like Aw Surge, which is a big AoE. You could raise a walker. And then you're also rocking heavy armor with a weapon out. Both of these are are fine. You, you can, yeah, there's there's a lot of melee uh, hybrids going around right now and they're doing quite well. On its own, this build isn't crazy strong. Your magic is weaker than a full mage. Your melee is weaker than a full melee. You're going to lose against the first run and Orgmere one-on-one. Would say this isn't great, but it kind of is. If you're good with a sword, you can go out, clear a bandit camp, heal yourself up, raise walkers and throw them in bandit camps. You can do a lot and you can achieve a lot on this on your own. Just know that you're not mastering any one area of the game. For this, you want to be a, you know, a human. I'd go Tind Tindremic because they've got good like magical buffs. You want to go age 31 again, the, the standard melee fighter age. Size, I would go pretty tall. If you want to go full height, I get it. You get full max melee damage for that. Very, very strong going full melee. Some people go like somewhere in the middle to not be too tall and not be stood really tall like a Thursa. But, you know, I, I like to go max height on my melee builds. Um, weight, you want to be stout. Again, it's 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 the go-to normally for a melee fighter. And then with action skills, if you've watched the video all the way, you've seen us talk about the fighter action skills, you've seen us talk about the, the mage action skills, and it's somewhere in the middle. You, you know, you're not taking them out of archery stuff this time. You're going to go swords or weapon of your choice, armor, heavy armor, aggressive stance, defensive stance, blocking, sprinting, all these things. You don't need to go into anatomy for bandages because you've got healing from magic, but you can if you want. And then you need to pick up the magic stuff. Vitalism is your, your mana again. Mental offense for damage, mental uh, training for, you know, to lower the magic cost, all these things. Um, and then you want to choose your magic schools. Ecumenal, most people go to 62. You get T-Lash, you get the magic shield, you get the heals. And then it's up to you, 90 to 100 points in necromancy, or you can dabble somewhere else. But that's it, five five builds that you are seeing a lot of in the game. And as, as if you play this as a new player, you're going to see these names thrown around the world a lot. Mage Tamer, Dex Mage, Dex Footy, Orgmir with a shield. You're going to hear these things a lot. Uh, hybrid Human, because they're just really good. They're really good. They're really popular. And there's no limit on what you change in these. There's no reason to say you can't take the Orgmir Footy and move him into lancers and mounted combat, mounted charge, run around with a lance. There's no reason to say you can't take the dex mage and switch out the necromancy for all the elemental spells and be a dex mage that does fireballs, lightning and all that stuff. You can change it as so much as you want, but these, if you make the choice of the character creator, know what your character is going to be like in the game, you can change it around. All your action skills can be de-leveled and re-leveled in the game. Things like weight, 
height to a certain extent and other things can be adjusted in the game so yeah just make the right choice of character creator decide what style of play you want to be you can't change your clades you can't change your race so make that choice right get in the game and have fun i hope this video has been helpful or informative it's not a deep dive on any one build it's just a broad overview if you want to see deep dives let me know but there's some people out there that make incredible builds so you know i don't want to overdo anything but yeah these are five really good builds i hope it's helped subscribe for more go play mortal buy mortal download mortal go play mortal i'll see you in the game bye that's it bye bye bye, bye. subscribe they'll say that like comment um yeah bye